Authorities are investigating the drowning deaths of two mentally ill women that were in their custody. Now, the women, uh, Nicole uh, Nicolette Green and Wendy Newton, uh, suffer from mental illness, uh, and they had voluntarily committed themselves for mental health treatment. Uh, now, this was happening in North Carolina uh, uh, during the uh, hurricane. Now, the two women were being transported to a mental health facility from a hospital when the sheriff's van that they were traveling in was overtaken by floodwaters. Now, the two sheriff's deputies in the van managed to get out and they were hiding on the roof for safety, said Sheriff uh, Philip E. Thompson of Horry County. Uh, but the women, unfortunately, did not. Now, by the time emergency workers arrived by boat and found the deputies on the van's roof, it was too dark to dive. The van, with Ms. Green and Ms. Newton inside, remained in the waters by Highway 76 overnight, and their bodies were recovered Wednesday evening. Now, the families, of course, are questioning, now, wait a minute. This wasn't supposed to happen. You were supposed to take them in for treatment. How could this happen? What were you even doing near floodwaters? That's not where you were supposed to be going. In fact, Allison Newton, Wendy Newton's daughter, asked, why the hell would they leave a safe drive a dry area to go to God knows what? Something feels wrong about this. And as we go through the details here, uh, I'm pretty sure you're also going to get that uh, get that feeling. Um, officials on Wednesday said the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division and the Sheriff's Department were conducting investigations into what happened. Those two deputies, Josh Bishop, who had been in the force for six years, and Stephen Flood, ironic, uh, who had been in the force for 10, have been put on administrative leave while they uh, look into this. Now, Sheriff Thompson said they did get out and try to get the ladies out, but he's not sure how long they tried, possibly about 45 minutes. He also says that they may have struggled because of the way that the van was positioned against the guardrail or because of the pressure of the water on the doors. So it's possible that they just might not have been able to get them out uh, because of those couple of factors. But the real question is, why were they even there in the first place? The, they were not being evacuated from the floodwaters. No, no, no. They started out in an area that was not impacted by floodwaters, and they were heading to an area that was also not impacted by floodwaters. But yet, for some reason, the deputies in the van drove into the floodwaters. What, what were they, trying to take a shortcut? What, what's going on here? What, what, what were they doing? Well... As I said before, they were both being taken from hospitals where they had been committed voluntarily to mental health facilities. Nowhere, nowhere should they, they should have been nowhere near those floodwaters. And yet, for some reason, they were. Now, at the news conference, Sheriff Thompson said that his department had been responding to a court order to transport the women. However, the family members said, what court order? There was never a court order, um, at least not that we knew about. And normally, this has happened before. We've had them go to hospitals. We've had them go to the mental hospitals uh, when this has happened. And, and we've never had any problem. We were always well informed. We always knew where our family members were. But in this case, we had no idea where they were. They didn't tell us anything. In fact, we found out that our family members were dead from the news reports. Wow. Now, uh, apparently, it is apparently routine and required under state law for law enforcement to transport, uh, transport people who are involuntarily committed and who are determined by a physician as posing an imminent risk of harm to him or herself by virtue of mental illness, according to a, depart uh, a statement from the State Department of Mental Health. It was unclear to the families whether the women had expressed an intent to harm themselves or anywhere else, or anyone else. So they it's very good chance that they shouldn't have even been in the sheriff's custody to begin with. Because there is no evidence that they were being dangerous. Again, they were both voluntarily committed. They both said, oh my God, you're right. 
I may have an episode. So I'm just going to go to the hospital. I'm just going to go to be safe so that, you know, uh, everybody else around me is safe. And so that I'm safe and so that nothing happens. So I'm going to turn myself in here and get my treatment. Now, one was, of course, uh, schizophrenic. She was taking her medication. Uh, and she's like, I think there's going to be something. I think I may have an episode later. So I'm just going to go and get treatment myself. Okay. Sure. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense. Now, the sheriff did not think the women were in restraints when they drowned. So earlier reports came in. Uh, and, and this is what, when the family had found out about us, uh, is from news reports that said that they were literally shackled in restraints inside of the van when they were drowned. Now, he said, the sheriff did, restraining patients, uh, patients was not typical. If they're not combative or having issues, and I understand that they were not. So then what about those uh, earlier news reports then? Why were they shackled according to those reports? Now, maybe the reports were wrong. Or maybe they were handcuffed anyway. I don't know. And neither does the sheriff. He could not say for sure. Well, how could you not know? You're the sheriff. You should know whether or not that they were restrained because, again, uh, you had the officers there, the deputies there, who could tell you. No, there's something that stinks about this, right? In fact, not only that, uh, but here's the thing. The deputies also apparently drove onto a road that was blocked off because of flooding. The sheriff could not account for why they would have done that. So many unanswered questions here. Why were these women uh, who were apparently not combative, apparently not dangerous to themselves or others, shackled inside of a sheriff's van? And why did that van decide to go to a blocked off road that was flooded over? What? So many questions. And the family of Allison Newman, the other woman who uh, was uh, unfortunately drowned, is also asking questions. Since, again, they were not told much information and had to rely on news reports for the details. And, of course, the details are that these two women may have died in handcuffs. Allison asked, why would they chain her and another lady to the back of a truck? Why didn't they just tell us that she was being transported? Why were they going through the floodwaters knowing how dangerous it's been? That's my mother you're talking about. I couldn't imagine. Look, it, this story is disastrous in about a million different ways. I mean, could you imagine if they were restrained, despite not being violent, despite not being a danger to themselves or others, that the reason that they drown is because they were, res were restrained inside of the back of the truck and couldn't get out. I, I mean, could you imagine being shackled or handcuffed to a wall? Right, and seeing the floodwaters rise and not being able to do anything. That's just about the worst thing that you could imagine. Absolutely terrifying. And so there's a lot of questions that need to get answered. Uh, pe people need to be held accountable for this. Uh, and the families, I, I mean, look, the families, there's nothing we can do to bring those women back. But these families deserve answers. And they deserve justice for what happened. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.